It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, Brian, here's a question. Uh, this one is this one's near and dear. I'm hoping you have a story to tell because I've got some stories to tell on this. And this is from Jacob. Jacob says, I'm 24 and I need to have surgery. Okay. I save 25% plus uh, and I have money in my HSA and my emergency fund. Should I use part of my HSA to pay for this or use my emergency fund? I think a lot of financial mutants approach this problem. You know, well, first, Brian, let me set you the table for you. Why don't you explain uh, really quick, very quickly, super, super quick, what is an HSA and what are kind of the three ways that people use them? And then talk about with financial mutants, oftentimes we run into this problem that we think, okay, well, that money is sacred. I can't ever touch it. But sometimes it might make sense to use that for medical expenses as they're incurred. Can you can you run through well, those things? I even had, um, and look, it depends upon how elective this surgery mm-hmm. is. If it's obviously something that you don't get to be a decider of time, but we'll, we'll get into these other things. But it is, we talk about this all the time with like when you're planning to have children uh-huh. and other things. Yep. There's nothing wrong with paying attention to when your annual enrollment mm-hmm. dates are, you know, because, you, you know, every employer has an annual period where you can actually update the your insurance options. And some plans, especially if you work for big companies, they offer the loaded up plans, the the, the PPOs um, and, and other things where you just pay the copay and you have much lower deductibles and other things. And then you have the health savings account, which we love health savings account, as long as you're not really needing to use the money. Mm-hmm. Because the problem with health savings accounts plan is that they have to have a high deductible insurance That's plan right. attached to them to make those deductions of the contributions work. So there's nothing wrong with also first decision is, can I be strategic with what's going on? I mean, Liz, this isn't a perfect analogy, but, uh, you know, I worked for a company that um, I was able to, through the flexible spending account, the FSA, that's different than an HSA because they don't usually coexist. Um, but it is one of those things. I, I didn't get my LASIK surgery until I waited until, you know, I knew I had that plan mm-hmm. that I was going to be able to, yeah. to really get the better option there. So that's the first thing, Jacob, is first, what type of company do you work for? Is your cafeteria plan have multiple options? And if you can be strategic with the election of when you have this procedure done, maybe you wait until after your annual enrollment and switch over to the mm-hmm. other plan um, if there's not a, you know, waiting period or anything. I don't, I mean, I can't imagine on group sure. insurance there would be, but I just feel like I need to put that disclaimer out there. So then we'll move to the next part of what Bo is talking about is what are the three ways you can use a health savings account? We, we love the fact that these things are triple tax advantage. Yep. I brag about it constantly. Triple tax advantage means that you get a deduction when you put the money in for yourself. You also get the ability for them to grow completely tax deferred, meaning is the if you choose to invest the money, it grows tax for you know tax deferred, and then if you use it for qualified medical expenses, it actually gets distributed out tax free too. That's the triple tax advantage. And then if it's in your employer plan, and they allow you to make those deductions with payroll dollars pre tax, it's actually a force. There's a quadruple tax benefit. As you could avoid some of the Social Security and Medicare taxes as well. But realize most people. Only 4%, I believe, mm-hmm. actually use the full triple tax advantage because most people are using this as a clearing account. They, they take the deduction. They put the money in. They take the deduction. They never actually build the money up and invest it. They use it just to clear it in, clear it out with current year mm-hmm. medical expenses. Um, if you're in a situation, I love really getting the triple tax advantage, but I also understand if this is a big medical expense, there is the why. The why component comes into mm-hmm. play is that I would much rather you get into your health savings account using it for what this is actually for the qualified medical expenses than um, blowing up some other portion of your money because I don't want you to – no reason to drain your emergency reserves mm-hmm. down to zero if you have this money mm-hmm. that you could because you know so many bankruptcies and other things are caused by medical – um, issues. Mm-hmm. And I just would hate for you to run yourself so lean that you get yourself in a desperate situation because that's that's the thing I always tell people is that bad news, because the, the bad thing is volatility uh, as well as 
you losing your job, real estate market getting crushed, all these different components, they're extroverts. They Mm -hmm. all hang out together. They party like rock stars together, and they wreak havoc on us all uh, because these bad news things don't happen in a vacuum separately. It's not like, you know, real estate market collapses, wait around for um, unemployment issues to go away. They all kind of happen in a, mm-hmm. you know, together. So, so just be careful because I don't want you to get on shaky ground, Jacob. And look, sometimes cash flow is just tight, right? Yeah. Like when we're early in our, especially if you're like the messy middle and you got all kinds of stuff, or maybe you're pretty messy middle and you're at the early stages of your career. There's just not a lot of money laying around. So oftentimes, maybe you are someone who's been maxing out that HSA and those dollars have been growing and those dollars have been growing, but a few things hit all at once. You're like, gosh, I got this surgery coming up. I've got this major medical bill. And man, it's just going to put me in a tough spot if I try to pay for it out of cash flow. So I have these two options, right? I've got my emergency fund that you laid out and I got my HSA. Well, I think one of the things you have to do is look at the size of those accounts. If you're someone who has a lean emergency fund, maybe you've only got one, two, three months of expenses in there, but you have a healthy HSA account that's just kind of sitting there growing, yeah, maybe it does make sense to use that HSA, especially if you've got some earnings in there because you're capitalizing on the tax benefit, distribute it out and use those dollars. If, however, you're someone who has like a very robust emergency fund, maybe you've got six months or six months plus and it's larger than your health savings account, Yeah, it's okay to use some of those emergency dollars. You have to kind of look at your unique and personal situation and figure out, okay, what is going to be the highest likelihood of me pulling money out and not having long-term detrimental effects to my financial well-being? And after I do that, how quickly can I work back up the financial order of operations? Meaning if I do pull it out of my emergency fund, how quickly can I get that replaced? If I do pull out of my HSA... How quickly can I get that money put back in there for this year's contributions? Being a financial mutant means you become very good at the incremental decision making. I, previously on this Q and A show, I had answered, talked about that I had ten thousand dollars I didn't do in um, Roth IRA mm-hmm. funding because I was starting the company. Look, that was an incremental decision. I didn't have the money. It does have a cost that because I didn't fund that. But does that mean that I would? I, I'm so much happier that I started the company. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you compare those two incremental decisions, the growth of my business is worth more than even mm-hmm. the the opportunity cost lost. But however, if I'd use that money for buying a car or doing something like that, that would be an incremental decision that would have been a huge negative. Your health is probably the most important thing when you're talking about incremental decision making because no money is going to be created in the future if you don't stay healthy. That's so right. I look at it, you got to keep the machine healthy. There's a reason when we talk about, you know, as you get older, respect what you got going on. I've heard Warren Buffett talk about the fact you get, you know, basically if you only got to choose one car for the rest of your, you know, you get to choose any car out there and it's going to be paid for for you. But the problem is you have to drive it forever. Mm-hmm. It's the only one you get. He's talking about your body. It is the vehicle we use to go through life respect it, be good with it because you you know the other stuff doesn't matter if you're not keeping that healthy. So so pay attention to that because I, I mean I think that big the incremental decision making is you have to choose what is going to ultimately give you the best result. Another thing and this is again I love having the live chat because Slayer Dort just reminded me of two things I think that are worth mentioning. Most people don't realize that medical procedures and medical stuff in general is oftentimes negotiable. Either one, you can negotiate the price depending on what the procedure is and what kind of consumer you are of the procedure. And two, there are times where you can do some sort of payment plan, right? Now, if it's going to be like interest bearing and interest accruing, then that's not great. But maybe say, hey, right now, I want to do this procedure. Can I, you know, pay, can I pay you over the next six months, next eight months, interest free? You might be surprised to know that the providers, in order to have you be a consumer, are willing to do that. So always have that conversation on the front end. Or say, hey, if I pay this in full today, can I get a discount? You actually have the power as a consumer to do those sorts of things.